So when they asked me to give this talk, they said that I could speak about anything that I wanted. They didn't even make me submit an outline or anything. This is crazy, right? Um, you guys are going to regret that decision, by the way. Um, but they asked me that they, I could talk about, they told me I could talk about anything that I wanted. And this was, this blew my mind. It was very freeing for me because as a kid, I felt like my voice was a little stifled sometimes. I was told that I talked too much in class. I was told that I was off topic because my teachers didn't see the connection between Shakespeare and Tupac, but I did. And so I was thinking, you know, I can talk about anything that I want. And so as a young man from Los Angeles originally, I thought, shoot, I want to talk about Kobe Bryant. I want to talk about basketball. So let's do it. This year, Kobe became the fifth player in NBA history to score 30,000 points and the youngest to ever reach that milestone. Over his career, he's averaged 25.5 points per game. And although he might not ever catch Kareem for all-time points leader, he should pass Michael this next season. But is it all about absolute totals? Over the respective careers, MJ has higher per game averages in most all categories, including points, rebounds, steals, and assists. And he has more hardware. So here's something crazy. The Miami Heat this past season went on a 27-game winning streak. Now, if you take their winning percentage from the 100 games before that streak started, the probability that they would have won 27 in a row is 0.002%. Not 2%, not 0.2%, 0.002%. Talk about defying the odds. So what was that? Was that boring? Was that disconnected from the real world? Or was that the exact kind of conversations that students all around the country are having every day and just overlaying math on top of it. They're having these conversations in hallways and on blacktops and in math class when their teachers are telling them to shut up. Why can't we package education in a way that is delicious to the minds of students? I'm here today to tell you that kids are literally bored to death in school. We all know about the dropout crisis, but what you might not know is that nearly half of high school dropouts say that one of the major reasons for them leaving school was because they did not find it interesting. And those high school dropouts are expected to die nine years earlier than their peers with degrees. And in a major study in a U.S. city, they found that 94% of murder victims under the age of 25 were high school dropouts. Literally bored to death. When I was in high school, I saw some of my closest friends and peers become disengaged from school, most notably from math class. They didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, and it was incredibly frustrating for me that I was the only one that saw these bright young kids were slipping through the cracks. And I got mad about it and started to tutor kids in math. And I quickly realized that the math we were doing was boring. It was whack. It was not fun. It was not engaging. It was not culturally relevant. Of course, they didn't want to do their homework. They wanted to have fun. They wanted to go outside and play basketball. And then I started to integrate, the, integrate basketball into the math a little bit. So really simple things, like instead of Sally took X number of shots, I mean, Sally took, you know, Sally had X number of apples, it's Kobe took X number of shots. And I saw a little glimmer in their eyes. Oh, this math stuff isn't so bad if we're talking about interesting things. I knew that if we could bring the NBA into the learning equation, we could make math fun, engaging, and culturally relevant. And that's exactly what we do with NBA Math Hoops. We've partnered with the NBA and Hasbro, and we've created a supplemental math curriculum for middle school students specifically that is centered around a basketball board game and soon to be mobile app. And in an early pilot st test, students' math scores improved by 51%, and their attitudes towards math fundamentally changed. So far, we've created over 10,000 math champions across the country, and it's just the tip of the iceberg. And we are part of a movement. This movement has been around for years, but it's gaining momentum daily. Big Picture Learning, which most of you probably know about, that helped incubate NBA Math Hoops, 
They have schools around the world that offer personalized instruction and real-world learning opportunities. And get this, right now, hip-hop legend Jizza from the Wu-Tang Clan has partnered with Columbia professor Dr. Christopher Emden, and they're doing a pilot program in 10 New York City schools that's getting kids hooked on STEM by having them create verses that are lyrically hot and grounded in scientific principles. It is initiatives like these that will change the tide in education, that will spark a love of learning in the hearts and minds of young students, and set them on the path towards a successful academic career and long, fulfilling life. Now, since tomorrow is Mother's Day, um, I wanted to share this last piece with you. So, when I was a kid, my mom and I had a tradition that we called happiest and saddest. Uh, every night before bed, we would share with each other the happiest and saddest moments of our day. Uh, and it was a great way for us to, you know, spark deeper conversation, and it brought us a lot closer. And so I want to do kind of an abridged, modified version of that with you all today. I'd love for you to take a few minutes and think about the happiest and saddest memories that you have of your educational journey. And I ask you to think about whether those, that happiest moment came when the learning was relevant and relatable. And the next time you're talking to a kid, ask them what they're passionate about. Ask them what they love, what gets them riled up, what they want to talk about in math class when their teacher is doing boring proofs on the board. And then help them dissect that, break it down, and find the learning in there, because it will be in there. The world is a fascinating and fun place. Shouldn't the classroom be as well? Thank you. <laughs>